2 Timothy 1.7. Okay, David? Right now we're just going to read 2 Timothy 1.7. Okay, let's all stand up for the Word of God. And let's read this together slowly, okay? For the Spirit of God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Alright, let's sit down. So, God's power to change us. Today's part four. So, three parts we've done so far. Anybody remember what the first part is? We have to what? Anybody? We have to desire God, right? We have to desire God. We have desire for a lot of things in our life. But if we want to change, we have to desire to be like God. We have to desire to change, okay? First one, desire. Because if you have no desire, you ain't going to change, right? If you don't have desire to be more fit, you're not going to exercise. If you don't have desire to be smarter, you're not going to study. Unless you have desire to be more like God, you can't change to be more like Christ. Number one, desire. Okay, number two, you have to use the tools that God gave us. What are the tools that God gave us? Anybody? The Bible. God gave us the Bible, the Word. God gave us prayer, allowed us to communicate. Number three, God gave us the Holy Spirit. So number one, desire. Number two, you have to use the tools that God gave us. And number three, you have to, you must believe that God's power can and will change you. And that change will make you happier. Just like you believe in God, you have to believe that God actually does have the power to change you if you desire it. And you use this tool, God has the power to do it. You have to believe it. And more, that the change is actually going to make you happier. Okay. So today, you could tell by the sermon title, part four is what? Anybody? Everybody? Let's read it all together. Part four. One, two, three. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Okay. So the fourth part is we have to depend on the Holy Spirit. Now, David, if we could get the scripture back up, uh, First Timothy. Um, I'm sorry. Second Timothy 1. Okay. For, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us what? Power, Power love, and self-discipline. ESV says self-control. Okay? So it gives us power, love, and self-control, self-discipline. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, gives us these three things. Power, love, self-control, self-discipline. Okay. So let's take the first one. Spirit of power. All Christians have God's spirit in their lives. Do you believe that? It says in the Bible, when you believe the word of God, God's going to give you what? The Holy Spirit. So if you're sitting here and say, I'm a Christian, basically that means I have the Holy Spirit living where? In my heart. Holy Spirit is with me. All Christians have God's Spirit in their lives, but not all Christians have God's power in their life. 
Christians, if you're a Christian, you have to have the Spirit of God in your life. It's a requirement. Because if you don't have it, you're not a Christian. While all Christians may have the Spirit of God in their life, not every Christian has the power of God in their life. You understand the difference. Presence doesn't always equal power. But the power is there if you tap into it. So, you as a Christian have Holy Spirit living in your life. But do you have the power of the Holy Spirit? When we talk about the power, what do we mean by the power of the Holy Spirit? Casting out demons, speaking in tongues, is this the things that come into your mind when you say power of the Spirit? Philippians 4.13 says this, I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. I can do all things. If I stop there, do you mean I can do everything? Do you mean if I was here? I'm not Superman, right? If I stop there and say, I can do it, I can do everything. Then you probably look at me and say, what's wrong with you? But now, this five verses continues. I can do all things, and it doesn't stop, through Him who strengthens me. Okay, so this is the power that the Holy Spirit is going to give you. The power of the Holy Spirit simply is the strength the willpower and the ability to do things that otherwise we aren't able to do. It's the power to do something we're not able to do. It is the power to live the life that God has told us to live. It's the life to live the life that in you and I know we have to live as a Christian. It's the power to live the commitment you have committed to God after your conviction. When you became Christian, you said, I'm going to live for God. And you commit something. God, I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to do more of that. But then we fail. But Holy Spirit says, what? I can give you the power so you can do that commitment. That you can stop doing that. And you can actually do that thing you wanted to do. I have the power to give you. That is the power of the Spirit. It's the power to overcome our sin nature our desire to sin, our love for the darkness, and live to be more like Christ. Do you want this power? How many of you want this power? To stop doing what we don't want to do and do things we want to do. Yeah, I want this power too. Thank you. Second is the spirit of love. Now, for the spirit of love, I'm going to bring up the next verse. Do you have the next one? Okay. Ephesians chapter, you could read this sitting down. Long verse, so we'll read it slowly, okay? For this reason, I kneel before the... Can we read it up again? <laughs> one, two, three. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of His glorious riches, He may strengthen you with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. The greatest ability, the greatest power, that the Holy Spirit gives you is the power and the ability to be the kind of person you need to be. <coughs> to be the kind of person you need to be. I don't know how many of you are happy with yourself. I'm really happy. I'm June 
and I love June. June is great. You know, I really don't need anything else. I don't know if Dina sits there and says, Dina's great. <laughs> I don't want to change. I'm just perfectly happy the way I am. Or James, or Nathan, Rebecca. We could be sitting here and thinking, most of us say, we need to change. I, because we already know there's some part of us that must change. I don't want to be this person. I want to be a better person. I want to be a person more like Christ. Holy Spirit, the greatest part that the Holy Spirit gives you is this, that it gives you the ability to be the kind of person we need to be. Before you do anything, you have to be something. Before you do anything, you have to be something. If I do a whole bunch of things for my wife, okay, she wants a new shoes, okay, buy her the shoes. Okay, she wants some flowers, okay, buy her flowers. She likes to eat, what, kaibi, I buy her kaibi. I just do all these things for her. I do these things. But if I don't love her, I'm just doing it out of my duty as a husband. Before I do things for my wife, I need to be somebody who loves my wife. Because if I don't do that, it's just out of duty. There's no love behind that thing. We must become someone who has Christ dwelling in our hearts. When we read Ephesians, it tells us, it tells us that the power of the God, power of the Spirit gives us the power so Christ could dwell in our heart. How many of you we always say this, Christ is in my heart, God is in my heart, God is in my soul. How many of you do, do you really feel Christ dwelling in your heart? Christ is beating in your heart. Christ is actually pumping blood into your body. Christ dwelling in my heart. That's the power that the Holy Spirit could give you. Someone who is filled with all the fullness of God. The goodness, the love, the caring, the compassion. When I became saved, when I was in high school, there were a couple of kids, Larry and Dave. I still remember their name. Dave Castillo. I don't know Larry's last name, but these two guys used to pick up me all the time because I was Korean, you know. Because there's only one Korean in the whole school, <laughs> you know. And there's me and two Chinese guys, and everybody else was American. <laughs> right. So these two guys picked on me, and we, I mean, we were just at it, pushing each other, hitting each other whenever we got a chance. And we just didn't like each other. But when God came into my heart, fullness of God came into my heart. Right in the morning when I got to school, you know, from the parking lot, they're just, you know. And I looked at them, and I had compassion in my heart, seriously. You know, I was like, Dave, God bless you, man. I love you. I was like, you're crazy. <laughs> I said, I know. Sam, isn't it crazy? I met God and changed my life. He goes, you're really crazy. But even though he said, you're really crazy, and you're really crazy, he kind of changed too. He wasn't like the old Dave and Larry that I, that I knew before. <laughs> the power of the Holy Spirit gives us the, the ability to be like Christ. Fullness of God. Okay, someone who is strengthened with power through his Holy Spirit in our inner being. So, it helps us to become someone we must become. The last. Can we go back to the verse? Second Timothy. And the last is what? Self-discipline. Self-control. How many of you... I really want to see your hand this time. How many of you... How many of you have really 
a lot of self-control. Let me see your hand. I have a lot of self-discipline. I can control myself really well. Let me see your hand. How many of you says I don't have self-control? Okay. Huh? Especially when you're hungry, right? You know, when I was married, there I read this book. It says, if you're going to fight with your wife, oh, it was a book on marriage, and it says to the wife, if you're going to fight with your husband, feed him dinner first. <laughs> because it's going to make him less argumentative, you know, when, when he eats first. You know, on a full stomach, he's going to be more, more relaxed. Right? Most, of us, most of us don't have self-control. Don't tell Daniel. Okay, Bora? <laughs> I'm going to talk about Daniel. Daniel, is, you know, he's, he's 10, but he doesn't have self-control too. You know, we do five family quiet time at home. You know, I talk to him about God all the time, and still, you know, he was, you know, playing his game yesterday, and I was watching him, and I told him, hey, why don't you go over there? And he went over there, and he got shot, and he got killed in the, in the, in the game. Oh. Not, not in real life. No, no, no. <laughs> in the game. Dude, run over there. To, you know, there's no way over there. And he started running. He got ambushed, right? And he turned, and he got really mad at me. Dad, you, you, you made me die. Self-control. <laughs> Self-control. It's not good to be mad at daddy, okay? <laughs> Self-control. A lot of us, even those small little things, we don't have self-control. When your parents tell you to do something that you don't want to do, when you're already doing something that you want to do, you become what? Frustrated. You get irritated at best. And downright upset and angry most of the time. And even rebellious. And disobedient too. When you're doing something and mom comes in and says, Rebecca, do something. Mom, wait five minutes. I'm like, why now? I know. know. We do these things. Would you tell somebody BTS is great? or Aladdin is a great movie, or Steph Curry is a great player, and somebody disagrees with you, what happens? You get angry, right? Why? It has nothing to do with you, right? It's not like they're your relatives or anything like that, right? Who cares if they don't, you don't like them? But just because they are not in agreement with us, you get upset sometimes, right? If somebody gets a better grade than us, or is more recognized for their instrument abilities or their sports abilities, or is more popular with friends, or gets into a better university, even though they may be our friends or even our relatives or even siblings, we become jealous. Because we become upset. We could be the best of friends. He's more popular than me in school. Since we're best friends, you could say, yeah. But then, I become more jealous, he gets a better grade, and I'm like, yeah, good job, and inside, like, you know, why do we do this? If we think about it, we know that we shouldn't be upset. We know that we shouldn't be jealous. We know we should not be feeling this way. But we do because we don't have self-control. But the Holy Spirit tells us what? That He's going to be giving us the power. He's going to enable us so we can have self-control. Power of love, power of self-control. Spirit gives us these things. Power, love, and self-control, self-discipline. What do we have to do? How do we get this? Anybody? Okay, Holy Spirit could give us this power. How do we tap into that power? Anybody? Who do we have to go to? Okay, we have to go to God, right? Right. We have to go to God. Holy Spirit has the power. Okay. Good for you, Holy Spirit. If we want that power, what do we have to do? We have to tap into that power. We have to tap into God, right? Okay, so how do we tap into God? 
How do you tap into God's power? How do you tap into your Holy Spirit? What do you do? Somebody must have an answer. Somebody must have a clue. What do we do? You ever talk to your Holy Spirit? Anybody talk to Holy Spirit? Anybody become tempted and you contact the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, I need you right now. This temptation, oh, I'm just going to smack him. You need to give me self-control right now. You need to make me calm down. Otherwise, there's somebody, we're going to call you ambulance. Have any of you contacted the Holy Spirit? Oh, I got this lust coming in my heart. If I let it go, I'm going to be thinking simple thoughts. I might even be doing simple things. Holy Spirit, I need your power right now. I need you to help me. Get Anybody do that? Anybody get in contact with the Holy Spirit so you get the power for the Holy Spirit? Anybody? Confidently, hey, I did that and it worked. They got looking at you. <laughs> you ever tap into the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome something? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. In order for you to tap into God's power, you have to spend time with God. It's the basics, right? If you don't spend time with God, how can you get His power? Right? You need to spend time with God. You know, if I spend time with God in my daily quiet time every single day, when that situation comes up, do I think, do you think I can go to God pretty easily? Yeah. If I'm used to spending time with God, I spend time with God in the morning time with QT. I spend time with God during lunch time. I spend time with God during recess. I keep continuing to spend time with God, being in His presence. When I get these things that come up, do you think I can go to Him immediately? Of course. I'm connected. But if I'm cold turkey, I haven't seen God today. I haven't talked to Him since last Sunday. And that for two minutes, something happens, do you think I sh I'm going to be going to God? No, that power is not going to be there for you. Understand? You know, you guys are at an age when you guys are going to need the power of the Holy Spirit. Because you guys are at an age where you're going to, you, you find it who you are. You know? I was a kid, now I'm on my way to becoming an adult. Whether you're a senior in high school or you're fifth grade, you're in this middle zone where you're finding yourself. And in this finding, it's a discovery time. Understand? It won't be like going to the Amazon forest or going to the North Pole. But it's a lot more complicated because you're going into who you are inside your heart. You're going to find out what kind of person Jenna is. What's in my heart? Am I this kind of a person? Do I want to be this kind of a person? How do I want to live my life? What kind of person am I? In this time, you're going to have a lot of stress. Your middle school and high school, believe it or not, it's very stressful. You're going to have having stress over the smallest thing. It's not always about the homework. You're going to have a lot of stress. And if you don't have help, you're going to become depressed. You're going to feel lonely. You're going to feel like nobody understands me. All of you in this time, you guys desperately need the power of the Holy Spirit. Understand? He's like a billionaire. He's like the rock strong. He's like the president of the United States. He has power. I mean, you have somebody who's got your back. Who you can totally trust because he's going to love you more than your parents. Total love. You need this power. If you're going to 
live your teenage years in a happy, fulfilled state. And being in the presence of the Holy Spirit will change your lives. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We desperately do want to change, Lord, because we are Christians. Daily, we want to grow in you, Lord. We want to become more like you, Jesus Christ, every single day. More like you, more like you, and be more fulfilled, more confident, more happy. Thank you for sending us the Holy Spirit, who's going to give us this power. And I pray that we would continually be in His presence, Lord, in our life, in the morning, during lunch, during recess, at night, so we can just tap into this power anytime because it's ready and available, Lord. I pray that you would give us the heart so we may desire this and give us the determination so we may spend time with you on a daily basis. I pray that whether it is our will or against our will, I pray now that the Holy Spirit will work in every one of us in our hearts so we could feel your presence, we could feel your power, and actually experience victory, Lord, that we could feel love and we could feel more self-control, more self-discipline, that we can overcome the temptations, all the hate and anger in our hearts, the lonelinesses, the depressions, and have more self-confidence in who we are as a Christian. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just domineer our life. I pray all these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.